first of all, I want to say big congratulations to you and your colleagues for the great work that you are doing. It's fantastic. I would also like to say that in what you have said, I just think it's, it's marvelous. It's wonderful what you said, totally agree. Homeopathy is the number one medicine. It's the medicine of now and it's the medicine for the future. But the future, I think, has not quite caught up with homeopathy. It's not quite caught up with what we are saying. So I applaud your endeavor and your work because you are letting people know, and that's what we need to know, what we need to do. Because I've been involved in homeopathic education for the last 45 years, we started um, the school in 81, by the way, so it is, it's a fair that was 40 years ago. And I started in homeopathic education before I started the school. It's my passion, you know. I really want to let folks who are keen to understand about homeopathy come and learn. And I think the best thing that we can do to ensure that homeopathy continues into the future is teach it and teach it beautifully. Um, now, the situation in the UK is a particular one where homeopathy had great interest and a great rise. It just came up and up and up and up so that by the time the 80s had, had come to be, we had full numbers in the classrooms. And then from that point, it slowly declined. And now in the UK, it's sadly lacking. It's, you know, you, you, people don't seek homeopaths so much anymore. Um, so we've, what we're doing here is keeping the flame alight. Um, in other countries, the flame is alight and different things are required. But right here in the UK now, what we need to do is ensure that homeopathic training continues. I think one of the most important things to emphasize about homeopathy you covered in your lovely words. It's a, it's a medicine which addresses the spiritual vital force. And you know, when I first read the Organon of Medicine, the aphorism that really touched me, touched my heart, was number nine. So I just read through, starting with one, and when I came to number, number nine, I was leaping around for joy. And I'm going to read it, although I'm sure you all know it, because um, I think it's really important. It speaks about health. And the organon generally speaks about returning the sick person to health. So the, the Hanuman does not dwell on health. He dwells on sickness and how to reestablish health. So speaking about health, he says, in the healthy condition of man, the spiritual vital force, and there we are. We've used two words that are out of fashion in Western society. Not in Eastern society, of course but in Western society. One, the idea of spiritual, and two, that there is such a thing as a vital force, because we have become solid materialists. We believe that that which can be seen and described is the truth. It's hard for us to understand that it's only the manifestation of truth. So, Hanuman writes, in the healthy condition of man, the spiritual vital force is the dynamis that animates the material body. Okay, we've got to stop and examine that if we're Western, if we've been trained in Western thinking, in so-called empirical thinking. Actually, it's not really empirical at all. It's prejudiced, but it, it's prejudiced according to a Cartesian, Newtonian viewpoint. So we have to just spend some time talking about that before we can even get started. Hanuman goes on to say that it, that is to say the spiritual vital force, rules with unbounded sway and retains all the parts of the organism in admirable, harmonious, vital operation as regards both sensations and functions. That needs unpacking. There's a lot in those words. And what I'm trying to emphasize is that if we're to teach homeopathy, we have to start at the very basics and teach that before we even begin to teach any pathology, any anatomy, any uh, materia medica. You know, these fundamental things need to be there first. And he goes on to say, so that our indwelling reason gifted mind can freely employ this living healthy instrument for the higher purposes of our existence. Now, 
If we belong to the East, we all know that life has a higher purpose. If we belong to the West, we don't know that. The higher purpose is something that is not spoken about anymore. It certainly isn't part of mainstream education. The best we can do with that, bring it into Western concept, is to say that the purpose of existence is to realize who we are, or rather to realize what our purpose is in life, what it is that we are meant to do. It's the doing that is important. And again, I think this needs unpack, um, unpacking, it needs to be revealed. So your lovely words that you started with indicate to me that this is already revealed. You've taken this for granted, but we have to take it not for granted, but that which needs to be understood. Just say, homeopathy takes us into the world of spirit. It is a truly mystical path with practical implications. And um, it attracts those people. Okay, I don't know whether I've had 10 minutes, but I have said what is for us the most important thing. It's to teach homeopathy properly, starting off with the primary principles, and then we can do the rest. But just reorientating the mind to accept that we are spiritual beings that have a physical life and a physical manifestation is the place that we need to start from. We didn't get that at school. We didn't get that from our parents unless they were you know, influenced outside of their school education. We are missing it. And that's why in the UK, homeopathy is not so popular at the moment. Yes, one further thing to say, we are facing a changing world and our paradigm does need to shift. And we do need to understand that we should not forever be chasing the tail of the disease, trying to catch that which has already passed, trying to catch the tail. We need to understand what is a disease actually and how can we treat it so that um, we can remain healthy. So how can we not be so susceptible to COVID? Treating the symptoms of COVID is actually not that difficult, but if we are susceptible to it, we're liable to catch it. Um, I probably have said quite enough now. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you. I am passionately engaged with what you do and always have been. And I think it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Norland, for your nice words and harmonizing with our thought process. So it is really a big uh, shift, paradigm shift requires in the, especially in the Western world because they are totally controlled by people who, in my opinion, sorry to say this, exploit the situation of making money. But yes, uh, now it. it is coming to the area knowledge that money is not alone, it's not enough. We need to, to take care of... I want please. to say something. Yeah, please. We, we made a divide between West and East, and I started it. But China is East, but it thinks West. And there are billions of people who live there. So, hey, we have a big job. You are absolutely right, because for me, capitalism and communism are the either side of the same coin of materialism. Mm. I agree. So I think uh, it is uh, leaning towards from materialism to holistic perspective where we need to incorporate the mind, vital force and physical plane together. And there comes the furtherance of uh, science and we are uh, moving from the materialistic science to that holistic perspective of the science and where the medical science is a huge uh, paradigm shift need to happen and I think it will happen within coming 50 years of time and I am I am very eagerly looking for that uh, change. So yep. before we go to the next uh, discussion session, I wish to invite uh, Professor Dr. Neeraj Pasricha from India, who is a senior consultant homeopath serving humanity for last 39 years. Treating so-called chronic incurable diseases like uh, celiac diseases, learning disability diseases, autism spectrum disorders, uh, PCOS, and uh, he, uh, Dr. Pasricha is the head of department at PG of and uh, postgraduate um, uh, uh, repertory 
ജെആർകെ ഹോമിയോപ്പതി കോളേജ് ആൻഡ് ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ഹരിയാന ഡോക്ടർ പസ്രിജ ഇസ് എ ഫൗണ്ടർ ഡയറക്ടർ ഓഫ് പസ്രിജ ഹോമിയോ ഹോമിയോ കെയർ ക്ലിനിക്സ് ഇൻ ഡൽഹി ന്യൂഡൽഹി ക്യാപിറ്റൽ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് ഫൗണ്ടർ ട്രസ്റ്റി പസ്രിജ ചാരിറ്റബിൾ എഡ്യൂക്കേഷണൽ ആൻഡ് റിസർച്ച് സെന്റർ ചെയർമാൻ വിഷൻ ഹോമിയോപ്പതി ട്വന്റി ട്വന്റി ഫൈവ് നാഷണൽ വൈസ് പ്രസിഡന്റ് ഹോമിയോപ്പതി മെഡിക്കൽ അസോസിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ഹമായ് ആൻഡ് ഹോമിയോപ്പതി കൺസൾട്ടൻസ് ഓർഡിനൻസ് ഡിപ്പോർട്ട് ഷഹുർ ബസ്തി ഇന്ത്യൻ ആർമി ന്യൂഡൽഹി വിത്ത് ദീസ് വേർഡ്സ് ഐ ഇൻവൈറ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ പ്രൊഫസർ ഡോക്ടർ നീരജ് പസ്രിജ ടു ഡെലിവർ ഹീസ് ഷെയറിംഗ് ഓഫ് ഒപ്പീനിയൻ റിഗാർഡിംഗ് വാട്ട് നീഡ്സ് ടു ബി ഡൺ ടു ബ്രിങ് ഹോമിയോപ്പതി ദ നമ്പർ വൺ പൊസിഷൻ ഇൻ ദ വേൾഡ് ഓവർ ടു യുവർ പ്രൊഫസർ ഡോക്ടർ പസ്രിജ Namaskar everyone. This is a universal greeting which need not be said morning, afternoon, evening or night. Namaskar is Namaskar. I welcome you all. Thank you Dr. Shah Ji. Thank you for giving me the platform to actually say what I have been writing upon since 2015. It has been six years when I was given the task of writing a vision document for 2025 the only thing which i would say thank you misha norland you actually hit the nail on the head we need to improve ourselves first why look outside do you agree with me i do i do i do it's a thank spiritual you. path but you know it's continuous so we keep going hey right thank yeah. you very much see if each one of us practitioner senior practitioners we start training just three students in our clinics the situation will change not overnight but maybe in next 10 years because the only problem is we do not teach the students we do not share our experiences with them that's the biggest part so i implore all of you senior practitioners to teach students at least 3 to 4 students every year in your own clinics and i request you to pay them at least a small honorarium so that they don't incur expenses while commuting to your clinic if not more before the covid happened i was teaching six students in my clinic but because of the covid now i am still teaching two students in my clinic this is a simple submission and i request all of you to start training these young talented students we have so much of talent but we are not able to tap it properly do you agree with me beautifully said the buzzword basically is quality see the document which i am presenting i have been working on it since 2015 and it is written basically in indian context so i'm sorry international will part will come to later india has been a world leader with largest number of homeopathic practitioners and homeopathic medical colleges India is the world leader with largest number of homeopathic practitioners and homeopathic colleges huge infrastructure and government patronage also and therefore the country must take the lead to set international benchmark for uplifting homeopathy to new heights following are the proposed areas for development of homeopathic science to greater heights the only buzzword to achieve this goal is quality first thing is raising the standards of homeopathic education as misha norlan rightly pointed out homeopathic education needs to be revamped the first and the foremost efforts are required to raise the standards of educational framework in terms of quality infrastructure in homeopathic medical colleges government instead of diluting the msrs msrs is minimum standards required should make them more stringent 
the homeopathy colleges should be graded into a b c and d categories by appropriate regulatory authorities for the students who want to take admission in these colleges let the colleges with poor infrastructure upgrade themselves they will be forced to do it let the candidates decide beforehand so that the colleges start competing with each other to provide best infrastructure to the students c there should be an all india this i had written way back in 2015 there should be an all india combined entrance test for homeopathic medical colleges on the lines of cat or mba so neat is already in place by the government it has already been placed all the teachers of these colleges should be subjected to regular cmes and regular cmes they should have minimum basic points which should be linked to their promotions and special incentives this has already been proposed next comes the pharma industry and institutions like ccrh can then choose best researchers and clinics and hospitals can have their pick of best doctors from colleges directly which are rated graded high every pg college must have a strong infrastructure of r&d department for undertaking research by the pg students government may open up special but extensive courses on homeopathy for other doctors interested in pursuing the practice of homeopathy by designing the appropriate courses with specific emphasis on homeopathic philosophy organon materia medica repertory and practice of medicine this in turn will contribute to increasing the quality of the doctors who are coming out of the colleges the homeopaths graduating every year will in turn make them better clinicians researchers and serve patients and institutions better it has already been proposed next comes increasing the quality of homeopathic products for this quality medicines better quality medicines will be the outcome of stringent controls in identification of the appropriate raw materials standardization of homeo uh, manufacturing and patentization processes etc all pharmaceutical companies should be asked to get gmp certification with minimum essential infrastructure to do that so that the purity is ensured and only gmp quality products are sent to the market government of india may notify suppliers of genuine raw drug materials in procure by for procurement by manufacturing firms this also has already been proposed quality research it's presumed that by betterment in quality of education availability of better researchers in institutions like ccrh and r&d in pharmaceutical companies will automatically improve all the research centers of ccrh should be adequately equipped with instrumentation and advanced infrastructure for undertaking quality research department of science and technology should support scientists from allied sciences who are interested in taking up research in homeopathy in particular aspects which require their specific expertise there is an urgent need to expand the use of homeopathy in veterinary medicine and agriculture fields i have seen wonderful results extensive research needs to be carried out in these areas veterinarians and agriculturists need to be adequately sensitized in this aspect short term courses like veterinary homeopathy and agro homeopathy can be developed for these aspects 
this has already been proposed creating increased avenues for employment employment of homeopathic doctors at ground level with active support from the state central government by appointing them to district hospitals phcs and dispensaries run by public sector enterprises like railways esi insurance banks as well as armed forces etc and other private companies by appointing them as medical officers directly from college campus placement appointing homeopathic medical officers in bank insurance companies esi as well as the paramilitary forces pay disparity between the allopathic doctors and homeopathic doctors must be removed immediately this is already happening in government sector international recognition of homeopathy on scientific platform this is what we are trying to do let's share our solved cases on the forums but with proper documentation documentation is what is missing these days people claim that they have done this 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 but where is the documentation we need to document all such cases and put them on the international platform for everybody else to realize that yes what we are doing they cannot do this is true more so for allopathy world health organization who an international body of united nations has barred homeopathic doctors from treating patients of diarrhea malaria tuberculosis hiv aids despite giving them repeated evidences to suggest otherwise imagine treating malaria dr hanimen proved sincona bar on himself only for this reason officially we are not allowed to treat we are doing everything in our clinics but officially who has barred us there are ample evidences of scientificity of homeopathy government of india should take the lead in getting due recognition of homeopathy for homeopathy by who covid 19 homeopathy has proved itself over over and over again premier homeopathic hospitals government and private parties should open a premier uh, homeopathic hospitals in on the lines of aims which will improve the quality of services rendered to the general public this will improve the quality of research also which is to be undertaken and also will give a boost to homeopathic medical tourism i am talking in future i am talking about homeopathic medical tourism which is as yet an unexplored unexplored area this has already been announced and already the work is in process in new delhi of setting up a hospital on the lines of aims this is supposed to be a 1000 bedded ayush hospital now comes homeopathy as first line of treatment government should make homeopathy available as first choice of treatment at phcs let's start at the ground level state hospitals and referral hospitals psu hospitals esis railways and army hospitals this ini- uh, initiative has already been taken by ministry of ayush government of india practical training to doctors and students by improving the standards of teaching institutions better practical training can be imparted to young doctors and students again i am coming to the point stalwarts and senior practitioners should also come forward to train 
students and young doctors so that the younger generation becomes better clinicians and skilled researchers this has already been proposed another area which has come to the fore is telemedicine and during this covid telemedicine has opened so many avenues for us by teleconsultation we can reach to the population who are in far flung areas where it is not physically possible to reach this action is yet to be taken so vision homeopathy 2025 we need to be ready with a new road map and be prepared for the future as in 2025 as most of these suggestions have we had in vision 2020 have already been implemented looking forward to suggestions and guidance from mentors seniors office bearers nec members doctors and general public homeopathy must be available as treatment of first choice to all and here dr shadi if you can permit me to discuss just two small cases like dr misha told us while treating covid one of the patients who was deaf who had gone deaf over the years but stopped hearing even with the hearing aids started hearing with homeopathic treatment even without thank the hearing aid thank you dr shaji and thank no, you everyone thank you now i invite dr shaheen ahmed from bangladesh a lecturer model homeopathic medical college and hospital editor homeo digest web journal and member of national homeopathic treatment board and national homeopathic treatment committee from bangladesh over to you dr shaheen to bring your ideas to bring homeopathy to the number one level over to you doctor thanks everyone good time for all i am dr shaheen mahmood from bangladesh thanks to dr shazi kudiyat for introducing me so nicely and thanks to my honorable dr misha narland and misha dr professor niras prashida i am here and suggest to talk about an important topic what needs to be done to make homeopathy number one medicine in the world the topic is extremely weighty and significant compared to the time allotted for discussion but i believe that with this little view of all of us will make a significant highlight on this matter so i am going straight to the point we can say that homeopathy is in the second position in the world in two ways one in terms of its pop popularity and wideness the other is terms of its status in the medical world if you want to see homeopathy in the number one position in the world we have to take it to a more advanced position in both directions first of all if we consider the aspect of its popularity and spreading then we have to understand that homeopathy has not only survived by overcoming many obstacles in the past it is gradually increasing in its own right many countries today have incorporated uh, homeopathy into their national health systems the basic qualities and procedures that we need to increase the popularity are we have to provide the appropriate treatment to the patient following the principles of homeopathy as we know homeopathy is an ultimate systematic treatment based on natural law the proper adherence to the principle can ensure the healing of the patient and the proper cure and in this long journey of homeopathic medicine the secret of its success popularity and expansion is it cures people we need to make sure our physician maintain this trend of success and healing we must not forget that the basis of homeopathic methodology is inductive reasoning in other words decision making from concrete facts homeopathy emphasizes substantive result and in medicine that is most desirable homeopathy is unrivaled in as in this real curative result therefore only assuring the proper healing of human beings can make our value and importance clear to all and that is the shortest path in this case we need to consider one more thing as we have seen homeopathy ranks second in the world in terms of popularity this is the announcement of world health organization but if popularity is to be considered i would say we are a little ahead of this announcement or our idea at present for many reasons many patient are forced to take conventional medicine even if the condition or 
are right, they would probably prefer homeopathy because in many countries, including ours, there is no homeopathic hospital, there is no significant patronage. Many countries also lack adequate education and training system. There is also a lack of coordination in terms of integrated facilities, pharmaceutical systems, quality drug management, proper clinical practice, etc. Despite all these shortcomings, where homeopathy as a whole has reached this stage and its popularity has gradually increasing, it is conceivable how far it would have progressed if we had all the facilities. And about other respect, we need to improve our position in the case of importance and status of homeopathy to the medical world and the medical authorities. Our biggest obstacle is present in this direction. And first and foremost, the homeopathic communities concerted effort, sincere cravings are needed. We, we have a lot of work to do to be successful in this regard. In this case, it can be said, evidence-based treatment from a homeopathic perspective should be increased and confirmed. All the levels of our community needs to be accustomed to this evidence-based treatment procedures and change in effective treatment. The effectiveness of homeopathy should also be highlighted through a lot of research work. Needless to say, a significant number of people do not know homeopathy, misunderstand it, and many negative myths about homeopathy are still prevalent in society. Through the effort of all physicians and with the endless publicity by our physician, organization, associations, authorities, the true nature of homeopathy must be brought before our people. At present, homeopathy is being deported from many countries and effort are being made to stifle it. Against it, we should focus on homeopathic establishment and hospital establishment, the establishment of new hospital, the use of homeopathy before and after surgery, improved management of existing hospitals, preservation of records and statistics is now demand of time. And its comparatively greater, higher capacity compared to the other medical system should be brought to the notice of the mass people and the government of different countries. We also need to move forward by expanding this practice to identify more diverse problems and find solutions to them as organizations like IFPS have come up with this for integrated thinking. Uh, in my book published a few days ago, I explicitly said I, I personally have an objection to calling homeopathy an alternative treatment. But nothing depends on our demands or objection unless we can assure ourselves of that position on all fronts. Therefore, for overall improvement, progress, and establishment of homeopathy, our homeopaths also have some things to do first. First of all, homeopathy practitioners around the world need to aware of their own right position and role. Going to the first position in the world, will undoubtedly require the sincere efforts, joint efforts and concordance of all. There is a serious tendency to create divisions among us due to different types of doctrines and thoughts. We have to remember divisive negativity will not only hinder our identification as an ideal system, it can also endanger our very existence. The norm determines a system or a standard. It is important to determine a unified education curriculum all over the world. Needless to say, if we want to see homeopathy in the first place in the world, we have to take it uh, as an enzyme to our thoughts and, and meditation of all homeopaths in all parts of the world and have to remain aware of it constantly. We have to work according to oil plant work approach. Therefore, as many homeopathic associations, organizations as there are, should be controlled by forming a central body and work towards the implementation of this that plan. Have to concentrate on publishing and disseminating the details of the cure case along with the evidence. At the same time, homeopathy needs to be informed as much as possible about its own scientific basis, its own methodology principle, so that everyone can understand its true form or nature. Of course, not to be forgotten, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. The strength and success of everything depends on the weakest factor. Therefore, wherever there is no proper education and training system, our poverty will be evident. That is why it's an urgency to set a standard for education practice and working or action procedure all over the world. For a system to be the highest position in the world, implementation of its norm is urgent. And there is a considerable lack of it in the homeopathic community. 
Moreover, there is another big problem which is any kind of lack of control. Take social media, for example. No doubt that uh, through these people know us, we are being propagated and spread. Then again, there is no way to deny many wrong teaching, misconception are spreading through it. Many myths are being created among people. But since we do not have a central controlling body of our own, our propaganda is being uncoordinated in many places, including social media. A system of such a higher level cannot continue like this. So in a nutshell, if we want to achieve this goal with our collective awareness, adopting an orderly plan under the control of a central body, unified and appropriate education and training around the world, adequate research work, control, publicity and promotion in people are unavoidably necessary. Health authorities and government need to be made aware. We have to prove our worth in front of them. Homeopathy deserves the first position in all aspects and deserve to be considered as mainstream right, rightfully, provided we are ready for it. Considering all this, I believe that only well thought out steps and plans can take homeopathy to its own place. That's my view. Uh, thanks IFPS and thanks to all.